Greetings, folks, and welcome to the Electromaker Show. This is your midweek roundup of all things Maker and Embedded and Lovely. Now, today we will be talking about our product of the week, which is the Nordic Semiconductor 7002DK. I was quite excited about this when it first came out, and we now have the benefit of Robin chatting about it too, who is our in-house engineer and gadget guru. Um, there wasn't a show last week because I was in Bucharest in Romania uh, for the final of the NXP Cup, which is an autonomous driving contest for students, and it was absolutely incredible. I will be talking about it a little bit later in the show. I Sadly, don't really have much in the way of footage, um, although I might be able to, to grab a few bits here and there to give you an idea of what it was like to be there. It truly is an incredible event. Um, so yeah, with that and a lot more to get through, let's get on with this week's show. We are going to start this show with the internal question, does it run Doom? Well, in the case of Maxwell James's alarm clock, it didn't until recently, but now, well, it does. Yes, this is not the first time, and it shall not be the last time uh, that we've talked about does it run Doom on this show. In fact, in the last episode we put out, we talked about building a RISC-V OS from scratch. That, yeah, uh, I'm just getting to the bit where she's implementing Doom on that. Um, Maxwell, uh, yeah, his idea here was to take his already existing alarm clock and to try and put an OLED screen in amongst it. Um, and uh, he, has made <clears throat> he has made a fantastic video about the process of uh, doing it. All of Maxwell's videos are hilarious. He has got an amazing sense of humor. Um, he has got a very dry way of performing it. Um, and his YouTube channel is criminally undersubscribed. Only 236 people are subscribed to it. So yes, please do uh, head to the link in the description. And as well as looking at the project here, if you click on this YouTube video, it will open it into a new tab where you can subscribe to his channel. Um, yeah, he's done a load of really funny stuff. Um, and they're also fantastic projects. Um, he's the same person that uh, made the instrument that you play with. Uh, you play in the toilet. You play by going to the toilet. I'll leave it at that. So the implementation is based on Dave Ruiz's work to get a, a Doom running on an Arduino Nano. And uh, as you can see here, there's a few buttons, there's an OLED screen. Um, he links out uh, from his project Maxwell does to Dave Ruiz GitHub, uh, where you can find yeah, the same thing. Um, and this just just bear in mind that this is uh, two kilobytes of RAM is what you get on this Nano, one of which is required to uh, refresh the screen. And so, yeah, this is working with incredibly small amounts of uh, grunt and processing power. Um, and uh, this is, a, I believe this is a project that has been, yeah, uh, this is a project that has been abandoned now, but even so it is still usable. And it's clear that it is because Maxwell has got it running on his alarm clock. So yes, uh, what does run Doom? Well, everything, of course, but you can add uh, this alarm clock to that list as well. As I mentioned before, um, Maxwell's videos are absolutely fantastic. Go and give him a subscription and there'll be a link to the project in the description of this video. It is time to look at the Electromaker of the Month winners for April. Now, if you're not familiar, Electromaker has a project section on the website, and these projects come from the Electromaker community. And that can be anybody, that can be you. All you need to do is create a free Electromaker account, and you can start posting your projects up on the site. And there's a good reason for doing so, because at the end of each month, we give all of the projects to an independent panel of judges who will pick three top prize winners for the month. And uh, this is based on the documentation of projects. It doesn't have to be the most complicated project in the world. It just has to be something that grabs our judges' attention, something that has obviously had some passion behind it, or something that is particularly inge uh, ingenious, but not necessarily high-level hard engineering or anything like that. Um, and there's always prizes to be won. We've given away hardware in the past. There's always a bunch of tidy Electromaker swag to take away. Um, and uh, right now as well, we're giving away Amazon gift vouchers. In fact, if you win in any given month, you will win $150 worth of Amazon gift vouchers, and second and third get $100 and $50 as well. Uh, so with Without further ado, let's look at the winners from April. As always, I will be leaving this right up in the uh, description of the video. You can head to the link and uh, click through to any of these projects from there, because um, uh, all of these titles are actually just linking out to the projects from the people themselves. And the winner this month, the first prize winner, was Mellow Labs, who has been really on a tear lately, just putting up video after video and project after project of, frankly, amazing ideas. And this time, it is a DIY set of automated blinds. Now, automated blinds is a smart home staple, and you can buy off the shelf things and there's various ways that you can do it but there's something amazing about the idea of making your own and this implementation as you're seeing is kind of cool because it does one thing different to most blinds they don't go from top to bottom they go from bottom to top and there are a number of advantages with this 
There's also surprisingly few moving parts to this, although of course it takes a little work to get it going, um, and there are some 3D printed custom parts as well. But in general here, you have a microcontroller, you have a, a couple of driver boxes which are designed for driving the motors, and you have a few limit switches for stopping it when it hits a certain point, i.e. the top or the bottom. Um, and yeah, our judges just absolutely loved the A, the simplicity of this, B, the idea of having the blinds that go from the bottom to the top, um, because the main advantage being, of course, you can put them near the top and still have some natural light coming in from the top, but blah most of it um, and uh, yeah these drawings and everything like that um, again this is something that uh, was mentioned specifically that the documentation wasn't just easy to follow it was a joy to read um, and I absolutely agree um, I love the the kind of stylized nature of all of this and the build itself is fantastic as well um, Mellow Labs is slowly turning his workshop into just a fantastic DIY uh, what, what do you call it like a cave it's not really a cave but yeah it's fantastic and uh, congratulations and absolutely deserve win. Um, if I remember correctly, I think you've actually been a, a runner-up of Electromaker of the Month before, but this time you absolutely deservedly take away the first spot. So, everyone wins a tidy pile of Electromaker swag, as you can see here, and also at Mellow Labs you will be taking $150 away in Amazon gift vouchers, but in second, uh, with $100 of Amazon gift vouchers, is Pico Farm LED. Now, this one is a little bit different because this is something that the maker is hopefully going to turn into a product um, that they can start to sell. In fact, I think they have actually started to do that by this point. But that doesn't change the fact that this is um, a really nicely thought out project. Now, one of the things the judges really liked about this is something that I had completely missed. And that is that all of the LEDs here are high quality growing LEDs. They're specifically designed for growing uh, plants in an indoor setting. And that's something that I didn't realize. I was dimly aware that there's different kinds of LEDs for growing and you know people uh, for, who would have home growing setups want to get specific kinds of LEDs because they need a certain kind of light I'm not really a plant growing person um, but yes uh, this has been thought out to work specifically that way um, another nice touch is that you can control it via 3.3 volt or 5 volt PWM so that opens it up to pretty much any kind of microcontroller you want to attach it to it's a really nice go between of a, an off the shelf thing that is a, a fully a consumer device and a really nice DIY way of doing things this is more like a module that you can plug into your own smart home setup and do whatever you want with it um, than anything else. And of course, if you want to, you could just set up the power supply, set the PWM to full, and then just leave it on the whole time. So there's some really nice time-lapse footage in the video as well, and there's also a super easy to follow guide for setting it up. I mean, there's only one cable that you need to set up, and it shows you this is PWM, this is 24 volts, this is ground. It even shows you piece by piece how to attach each one of these cables. Again, uh, very good documentation is what our judges find very impressive. Um, and uh, this has one won the second prize um, of a $100 Amazon gift voucher. And as mentioned as well, if you head to the Pico Farm LED page here, you will also find the site if you would like to get a hold of one of these for yourself. And taking third this month, it is the return of Kutlahan Akhtar, a name that may be familiar to those of you that have been following Electromaker for a while, um, because yes, uh, the projects that Kutlahan makes is always sort of amazing, and they have a very distinctive look. I don't know if it's just because they have such a huge amount of this particular filament, but they also have, always have these earthy sort of tones, and they also have these uh, always have these amazing um, face plates that fit to the devices. Um, but yeah, what's the actual project here? Well, this is an Edge AI air quality monitor, which is a pretty awesome project in and of itself, but it also combines it with a very DIY surveillance system as well. So there is a huge amount of documentation here that takes you through the idea and through every single step of implementing it, and that is one of the things that our judges just absolutely loved. In fact, one of the things that Cutlerhand does so well is that every single project goes through every element of doing it, but explaining why it was done as well. They are very educational. But from a hardware perspective, this is a, an ESP32 project, really. It's an ESP32 development board with an ESP32 camera. The model trained on Edge Impulse uh, for the uh, air quality is running on the ESP32. Uh, the Latte Panda three that you're seeing here, the Letter Panda Delta, I believe that is just um, running the server that that information is sent to. So yes, the bulk of this is the ESP32 development board with the attached um, uh, sensors, forgot the word for sensors for a moment there, um, and of course the camera. And if you would like to find out how to make this yourself, you really, really can, because this is just an incredible step-by-step -step all the way through every single piece of code and everything you need to uh, to make your own one of these. Um, this, this is a uh, 
yeah, this is incredible. People write books instead of doing this. Um, you could probably buy a book which is teaching you about all of these separate things, which is project-based, but instead this is something that Cutlerhan put up for free on the Electromaker website, and uh, it has won third for this month, and congratulations, uh, you'll be getting a $50 Amazon gift voucher along with the same Electromaker swag. Um, I'd like to thank everybody who has put things up on the Electromaker website, whether it's this month, whether it's last month, whether it's years ago. Um, I've said it so many times, I feel like a bit of a stuck record, but looking at other people's projects and the things that people are making is my favorite part of working with Electromaker. It's my favorite thing that I get to do pretty much. Um, so I will be leaving a link to this in the description of this video. If you would like to get involved, under the community tab, um, you can look at the projects or you can click upload project and that will take you to a page where if you have not got a user uh, uh, name, not got a user account, you can make a free one. And if you're already logged in, it will just take you straight to the CMS where you can uh, upload your projects. You can even bring projects in from other websites. So if you've put your project up on other websites already, you will find there's an easy way to just pull that straight across. So um, yeah, Electromicro of the Month, maybe next month you'll be the one walking away with the prize. Now, just quickly, I wanted to mention that Maker Faire Rome is now taking submissions from makers. Um, that means anyone that has something that they think other people might enjoy can apply to go to Maker Faire Rome. And I want to impress upon you that this isn't a product that you necessarily are going to sell. Like, sure, you can take that to Maker Faire, but if it's something that you are impressed with, that you've made, something that you think is fun, something that you think you've done differently to other people, or just some wonderful works of art that you've made with microcontrollers, or even with junk, Maker Faire is probably the place for you. I mean, take for example, the one love machine band which was literally made with bits of junk by culture here in berlin um, and slowly over the years became these moving sculptures that play their own music we also spoke with michaela who'd come up with this one-handed keyboard which is kind of amazing it has different registers you can move through and bear in mind that she lives on the other side of the world thought this project was awesome just said yes okay i've made this project and they said sure okay come to rome come and exhibit and then she had the perfect excuse for a holiday in europe so yes i will keep it that short if you are interested in finding out more head to the link in the description. Um, yeah, Make a Fair is one of the coolest things I've been to. Uh, if you would like to be a part of it, whatever you're working on, just see if they'd be interested in exhibiting it. Just a quick reminder that if you could take the time to check that you are subscribed to this channel and that you like this video and that you have set up the notifications so that you know when a video of ours goes live, um, all of those things make a marked difference to us on YouTube. Um, each one of them in a different way makes it more likely that our videos will be recommended to other people. I'd also like to point out at this moment that we have no monetization on our channel whatsoever. We don't run any kind of adverts. We don't have a Patreon or do any of that kind of stuff. Um, the only way that we do have money coming in is via the Electromaker store. And in fact, if you really want to support us, that's way more important than any of the YouTube stuff. Um, Electromaker.io slash shop is where you can find it. And yes, our shop uh, has pretty much everything that you would need. Uh, everything from Raspberry Pi and Arduino, uh, from Nordic, from everything from the first hobby kit you would buy someone as a gift up to uh, high level engineering stuff in fairly large quantities as well. Um, if you would like to... Uh, find out if we do have something very specific in stock you can also just get in touch with the store directly and they'll be happy to help you with all of that anyway uh, thank you very much for this short sort of not quite an advert but i guess it's an advert for us bit uh, let's get on with the show it is time for Product of the Week, an Electromaker feature that we put out every two weeks, which is slightly confusing, but that's just how we do things here. And the Product of the Week this time is one that you'll probably be familiar with if you've been watching the show for a while. It is the NRF7002DK. This is Nordic Semiconductor's first foray into Wi-Fi, and it is quite an exciting one. As always, we have our in-house gadget guru, Robin Mitchell, to take you through exactly what is exciting about this. And as someone who's a little bit more knowledge about, uh, knowledgeable about this kind of stuff, he'll probably be able to tell you in a slightly better way than I did over the last few months. Although it is something that you will have heard about because we've talked about it on the show. Firstly, because, yep, it's kind of exciting that Nordic's finally moving into Wi-Fi. You kind of wonder why it took them so long. But actually, the simple answer is because the technology wasn't quite there yet. Wi-Fi 6 brings a number of advantages, but in short, the simplest ones are it is has way more bandwidth, is way more powerful, but uses a lot less power. And this makes it something that fits alongside, say, for example, low energy Bluetooth, like Bluetooth low energy, like the stuff that Nordic is well known for. Now, if you'd like to know more about it, of course, you can look at this video. Uh, this would also be the point that I'd be holding my development kit up to the camera to show you about it, but unfortunately I don't have mine anymore. We gave it away as part of our 100th uh, episode celebration. But you can still win one. You can win the one that was featured in this product of the week video, and we'll come on to that in just a moment. Moment. 
So the article will be linked in the description of this video. Um, I would also like to point out that if you'd like to see this um, in action, there's a couple of places that you can. Um, I'll also link uh, our article from back in Embedded World in 2023, uh, where we got to see uh, various things from Nordic. But yes, this was the uh, this was the kind of one of the main events for us was actually seeing the NRF. Uh, this is a slightly different version of it. This is the NRF 7002 EK, which, as far as we know, isn't out yet, but will be coming out soon. Um, this is an Arduino compatible shield that you can fit on top of any other uh, uh, NRF development board. Um, of course, and any other Arduino as well, as long as it's uh, voltage compatible. Um, but this was, yeah, this was quite an interesting one. This is Wi-Fi based locationing is what they call it, um, which sort of fills the gap where the, you know, GPS location is fine as long as you can get GPS. But if you're inside, you can't. Um, but this allows uh, the boards to test various different access points and use um, an online database of just locations of those access points. It doesn't have any information about the people or the access points themselves to give actually quite accurate indoor location which is of course going to be massive in industry and all that kind of stuff but I also wonder what kind of smart home hobbyist stuff will be done with it as well. Not only that, but in the uh, Product of the Week article I'll be linking, there's also a link out to a project on the Electromaker website, um, which is a remote plant watering uh, watering system. Uh, this is uh, from the Electromaker project section, and this is by Naveen, who is a, a long-time contributor to Electromaker. So, yes, uh, the NRF 7002DK, very impressive uh, development kit. Uh, comes with um, an NRF 5340 chip on it as well, which is the, the Nordic's flagship chip. Well, it sort of still is. The NRF 54 has just been announced, which is sort of exciting. Um, but yes, the bit that I'm sure several of you will be interested in is how can you win one of these for yourself? Well, as always with Electromaker Contest, it's really quite simple. You just need to make sure that you are subscribed to this YouTube channel, and then you tell us in the comments what you would do if you won this development kit, um, and then you leave the hashtag NRF7002. All one word, NRF7002. And then on next week's show, we will pick the winner to win this amazing little development kit. So yes, good luck to everyone that enters. Uh, the NRF7002 looks really interesting. It's in fact one of the chips that I had the least time to play with because life was very busy at the time that I had my sample and then of course I had to give it away. There is another Nordic chip we'll be talking about later in the show, however, um, which comes in a few different packages and I'm going to leave it at that for now. I mean, it's, it's hardly like a secret. You're going to see it in a couple of minutes down the line on the YouTube video. What are you doing, Ian? Let's move on to the next section. Up next we have, well, yet another Nordic Semiconductor product, although this time actually it's a Seed Studio Zhao board. It just happens to feature the NRF52840 uh, Bluetooth Low Energy System on chip, and it is the Sense edition of that board. And the reason that we're talking about it is that Robin has written a Maker Board Spotlight. This is an occasional feature on Electromaker where we just talk about different Maker Boards, what makes them awesome. Um, if you look through the history of it, we've covered pretty much every board over the years. I used to write them very frequently as well. Um, uh, but just a little bit of weird kind of I don't know if it's confirmation bias and that I had been told that this would be happening, which is what made me think of it. But as it happens, I've also been completely independently to this fiddling a lot with this exact board for a little while. Um, one of the reasons I've been using it is because I have had a, a, an idea for a sort of like a macro pad that could also maybe be used as a MIDI controller for a long time. I've been slowly tinkering away at the design in my uh, almost negative free time that I have. And I've also been trying to decide what microcontroller or development board or what chip to put in it. And I've pretty much decided on that exact board. Now, I will waffle at length as to why I've decided to use that at a later date. But instead, I'll just mention for now, um, if you head to the link in the description, you can find Robin's Maker Board Spotlight on this board. Um, he will take you through uh, the, the real details of it. Let me give you a couple of cliff notes as to why I really like this particular board. Um, it is the Sense edition of Nordic's, uh, uh, sorry, it is the Sense edition of the Zhao featuring the Nordic chip, so Bluetooth low energy right out of the gate. Um, the NRF uh, 52840 uh, you can use with Edge Impulse, so you've got Edge AI on this tiny little stamp of a board. Um, but what about sensors? Well, you've got an inertial measurement unit and a MEMS microphone built into it. And yes, I have plans for both of those in my my designs as well. Um, if you flip it over, I'm not sure if there's an image of the back of it just here, um, but if you flip it over on the back, there is uh, uh, spots for both, um, ah, right here, look, uh, spots for both an NFC tag and a battery. There is a built-in battery manager on there, so you can plug in your lithium-ion battery and charge it through the uh, USB-C port, and yes, it has USB-C, very, very nice. Um, and uh, yeah, it's 
I, I don't know. The thing that appeals to me personally about this one is as a non-engineer, as someone who is happy to get into the weeds, you know, just last week I was talking about building operating systems from scratch using RISC-V, by the same token, being able to plug this thing in and use the Arduino IDE, and the Arduino implementation of it is fantastic, by the way, in my experience so far. Um, it seems like most of the stuff that you would have to dive into the Nordic SDK to get, they have ported across. Um, yeah, it, it made me think, okay, so instead of macro pad, which you plug into the computer, a wireless macro, macro pad with its own battery, Battery, very, very good. Uh, Bluetooth low energy, battery will last a very long time. Charge it when you need to. Also, what about a macro pad that is a MIDI controller that when you tilt it from side to side, it can, I don't know, open a filter or close a filter on a synthesizer? That's what I'm going to use it for. If you'd like to hear a slightly more sane engineer's point of view, head to the link in the description and you'll find the MakerBoard Spotlight there. <laughs> Just before closing up this episode, I wanted to briefly talk about my time at the NXP Cup in Bucharest, Romania last week. Um, I was very, very honoured to be asked by NXP to come and uh, moderate it. Uh, essentially, just be the guy with the microphone who talked and commentated the races, give announcements when they needed to be given, and generally be a point of contact for people to approach, so, so I could then kind of tell them to speak to people from NXP about the rules. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I, I'm not actually a part of the NXP Cup. Like I say, it was just very gracious of them to invite me to do it, and you can see me in the background here looking very electromakery with the cap and the t-shirt um but the the my main takeaway from the event uh was just how impressive it was that the students had got to this stage to make this i can't imagine doing anything this complex at that age i mean i know i didn't have an engineering background but even so um the rules are very simple. Uh, the, the car has to autonomously, with no remote control, drive around the track that you can see the layout um, The layout just here. Sorry, I didn't realize it didn't, didn't have you on the screen. Um, and this is from the NXP uh, broadcast of it, by the way. There'll be a link to this in the description. It's only 55 minutes long and it's well worth a watch. Um, and that's not because I'm moderating it. It's because it's genuinely an exciting sport to watch. But the car has to go, uh, an autonomous robot car has to drive all the way around this track as fast as possible, staying within the lines. Um, two, I think two wheels are allowed to go over the line, but that's it, or something like that. And then once it completes one lap and gets back to the start here, it then has to slow down and then stop in front of an object, which is this block. And you will see that in just a moment. I'm going to give you a taste of exactly how this thing was. In fact, let's, let's watch a lap now. And they are off. And a very, very fast start lifting up the front of the car into a wheelie during the accelerations, however still retaining a lot of stability. And so far this is a very strong run over the last crossover. A couple of bends and then the final set of chicanes. Just three more corners left. And that is another first lap completion. Ah, but the lap of honor went slightly wrong. <laughs> So as I hope you can see from that, this was a really fun event to be a part of. Um, and I was really impressed with how much this event was for the students. Um, you know, obviously this is a, a, a big event from NXP. They also had sponsorship from Mauser. Um, uh, but this isn't just an advert for their companies. This, the amount of support that was for the, uh, there for the students was incredible. The students all had their transport paid for. They all had their accommodation paid for just to be part of this contest. And all of the teams um, uh, had access to spare parts as well. So if anything went wrong during training uh, there was a whole host of spare parts to, to help them get their cars back together um i said it so many times during it um but it's worth repeating if you are uh, someone who was a student at the nxp cup whether you were someone in qualifying or whether you got to the final to be a part of something like that is an achievement in and of itself this is the same um technology that nxp put in their actual self-driving cars this is their fi uh, high level um what, what do you call it this is their uh, flagship um technology for uh, um, self-driving cars and self-driving drones as well, I believe. Um, I certainly didn't, do not have the skills to put together the stuff that the students did here. Um, so if you are interested in finding out more, there'll be a link in the description to this. Um, I, I'm almost certain, well, I'm hoping I'm asked, but I I'm almost certain I'll be at the next NXP Cup, probably chatting away again like I did last time. Um, but uh, yes, uh, do watch this live stream. It's only 55 minutes long. It's really quite an exciting sport to watch. And uh, maybe you'll also uh, hear the bits where I didn't have the room microphone on, and but I am still mic'd up for the stream. So you're probably going to hear some background conversations that you shouldn't have done. I really hope I didn't swear or say anything I shouldn't have done. Uh, please let me know in the comments if you pick up something that I haven't. <laughs> but yes, uh, I really did want to talk about it just because it's so um, so fresh in my mind and it was a really an honor to be a uh, part of this. I knew the NXP Cup was cool. I'd, I'd watched the online versions of it before and I, I was a part of the um, remote version, the lockdown version of it a couple of years ago. 
But to be there was a wonderful experience. And if there's someone in your life who you think might fit this, someone who's about to go to college to study computer science or embedded engineering, maybe put this on the radar because, yeah, every October you can register for the Cup and you will get sent your hardware kit for free. Um, but yes, uh, the NXP Cup was a lot of fun. There's a link in the description of this live stream. And I just wanted to sort of acknowledge the fact that, that it happened and I was there before ending this show. And if anyone from NXP randomly sees this, thank you so much for inviting me. It really meant a lot to be there. Um, and I, yeah, I did get kind of emotional towards the end, just seeing all of these people having worked so hard and the amount of effort that was put into making it about the students. That was our show for this week. Thank you so much for joining me and thank you for the continued support that you are showing us. Um, whether you are buying things in the store or just liking things on YouTube or just basically being someone who is a part of the show, whether this is the first time you've watched it or you've seen almost every show, it means a lot. Um, last week when I was actually at the NXP Cup in Bucharest, I was kind of thinking to myself, this is really wild because there's no chance I would have been there and been a part of it at all if I hadn't stood in this very attic for the best part of three years or however long it's been, talking about the very technology that goes into making the autonomous robot robots that were racing there. Um, and uh, that is in very large part because of the success of the Electromaker show. So thank you. Thank you, the viewer. Now, um, uh, the show will be back next week. Um, and uh, I would love to hear anything that you have been working on, anything that is exciting you. You can always leave suggestions for the show in the comments. We also have a Discord server where you can leave suggestions for the show or just chat about whatever you are working on. But for now, I hope you have a safe, fun and creative week and I'll speak to you soon.